I don't invite people to my house anymore. Ever since I decided to dig into the mysteries of the town, my walls look like that of a conspiracy theorist. The last transfer left a large amount of papers from her research on the town. Grainy photographs and cut sections from older issues of the Chronicle are pinned to the walls with tacks and scotch tape. All of this has been found, and yet I am still no closer to figuring out the craziness of the town. All I know is that the last transfer was looking into the town one day, and the next she was nowhere to be found. Now, I'm not saying something happened to her, but something definitely happened to her. I hear a doorbell ring and quickly drape a blanket over my current work. I open the door and Dottie barges in, in a whirlwind of red. Oh good, you're up! Hello, Dottie. Come right in. Thanks, darling. <laughs> Dottie sits at the head of my kitchen table and puts her legs up on the table. I give her a look and she quickly puts them down. I sit opposite to her. What's up, Dottie? I say. Dottie clasps her hands together and looks at me seriously. Taryn, my best friend Tetra Burns is celebrating her birthday on Friday. Oh, that's nice. How is she celebrating? That's just it. She's not. She's decided to forego any party and work instead. On anything important? Not even! Uh, She's just planning a peace treaty to end the sheriff's coup. That seems pretty important. Dottie shakes her head, black curls bouncing violently every which way. Karen, you have to help me! Tetra hasn't celebrated her birthday in a hundred thousand years! She's my best friend! Please! I know you care for her too. You still have the fireplace she gave you on your porch. I don't dare tell her that it's there because I have no idea what to do with it. Fine, I say. Before I have a chance to say another word, Dottie jumps up and hugs me tightly. Thank you, thank you, thank you! So, how old is Tetra anyways? I ask. Huh. Dottie places a hand on her chin. I don't know. She's your best friend and you don't even know how old she is? Taryn, darling, the years all just kind of blend together. I don't even know how old I am. (laughs) And with that, she heads to my door. Come to the diner tomorrow before opening. We'll plan some more. And with that, she's out the door. Well, that is not how I plan on spending my week. I better be getting some free pancakes tomorrow. The next morning, before the sun even rises, or my house's mandatory kitten-lizard hybrid crows, hisses, and coughs up a hairball down my chimney to wake me up, I head out to Dottie's. I've always loved walking around in the early morning. No one is awake, and even the lights of the city start to go to sleep as the early morning sun sets the windows of surrounding buildings ablaze with light. It's like I'm the only person in the world. I finally make it to Dottie's and walk through the front door. She never locks it anyway. As I sit at the bar counter, Dottie pops out from the kitchen. Good, you're on time. We have a lot to plan. She comes around the bar top and sits beside me. Now I have a lot planned already, and most of the decorations from last year can be used again, but one of us will need to distract Tetra while the other prepares. Maybe you should do that, I say. It'll be less suspicious. You're right. Dottie taps her red nails on the smooth white counter. Tetra would suspect that you would throw her a party. Me, on the other hand, she'd never think I'd do something nice for her. She claps her hands together. Now, all I need is for you to get the final touches for the party. It's the ones in the red on the list. Dottie slides me a piece of paper before slipping off the stool and back to the kitchen to prepare for the oncoming breakfast crowd. I skim through the list. Cake, streamers, cups, plates, and balloons. The usual party supplies. Then there's my shopping list for the party in red ink. Chicken feathers, sand from the driest desert, bloodstone, mud from the deepest cavern, a tall white candle, and a chunk of cheddar cheese. This is going to be one weird party. All day at work, my mind is muddled with thoughts of Tetra's birthday party and the last transfer's notes on the town. As I'm flipping through the files in the archives for my most recent article, I find a manila envelope with big letters labeling it April. It's dated as a year ago, when the last transfer worked here. I will look around to make sure the keeper of the archives, a strange older woman named Hildy and her rat John, aren't looking before I subtly slip the envelope into my jacket. I'll take a closer look at home. By the end of the week, I've collected the majority of the items for Tetra's party. I bought the bloodstone from the Springshard High Geology teacher at the Starlight Market. The candle was easy enough. Got that from the candle store downtown. We like fire. Oh gosh, no, that's too much fire. Everyone get out. 
It's a cool store. I've gotten a lot of candles for my house there. The chicken feathers and cheese I got from the grocery store. The last few things on the list are sand from the driest desert and mud from the deepest cavern. I'm not quite sure where to get those from. When I ask Chrome about it, he tells me to check Party City. Apparently it was that obvious. I find them within minutes of being there. As I'm checking out, the awkward teen with a name tag reading Kelvin, who's bagging my items, looks over at me. Party, huh? He says. Yeah, I've never been to one of those. He looks at me with big brown eyes through droopy bangs. I sigh. (sighs) Would you like to? I'll be there. Kelvin abruptly hands me my bag. Thanks for the invite. Receipts in the bag. Come again. And with that, I'm out of Party City and off to Dottie's. Dottie closes early today and hands me the keys. Don't let anyone in who wasn't invited. Didn't you invite the whole town? I ask. Exactly! I don't want any otherworldly characters at this party tonight, only otherworldly citizens! And with that, she's out the door to distract Tetra. I quickly begin setting up, and within a half hour, Chrome, Xavier, and Sheriff Orion Fairbrook arrive to help. Well, Chrome helps. Xavier snoops around Dottie's kitchen to find her chocolate cake recipe, and Sheriff Orion Fairbrook sits in a corner booth, writing and scratching out his speech for when he takes over the mayorship of the city. Soon, everything is perfect. The sand is scattered in a line across the door frame. The chocolate cake with French vanilla frosting is resting on the bloodstone. Chicken feathers are pasted absolutely everywhere they can be. And the mud is smeared across the windows, blacking out the sun that once filtered in. At this point, the diner is crowded with every person in town. Logically, they shouldn't all be able to fit here, but... I've learned that you should never apply logic to anything in this town. We all mingle and talk until Kelvin from Party City, who has for some reason been chosen to be a lookout, bursts through the front door. They're coming! He shouts. Everyone hides behind counters, stools, booths, and in Orion Fairbrook's case, a tea saucer. Dottie and Tetra walk in, and everyone bursts out, shouting surprise, and happy birthday, and what is life, and boo. Yeah, we really should have coordinated that a little better. Tetra is pleased anyway, and the party continues all night. Later that evening, Tetra blows out the candles on her cake before grabbing handfuls of it and running out the door. Where is she going? I asked Dottie. All children of Spring Shard are raised with the same story. After blowing out the candles, you have to throw cake onto every window in the building you're in to prevent the birthday goblin from coming into your house and licking your toes that night. Most people continue with the superstition well into adulthood. Dottie also explains to me that that's where the sand, mud, and chicken feathers come in. Protection from the birthday goblin. As the party winds down, I head back home. As I hang up my coat, I notice the creamy envelope on the kitchen table. The envelope from the archives. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Sitting down at the table, I gently open the file. Inside is a single black and white picture, showing a man and a woman in a hovering dislike craft. I know that face. I've worked with that face every day for the past few months. On the back, in loopy handwriting, reads, Chrome and I, June and Spring Shard. This was less than a year ago. I have not seen any vehicles like this. What is going on in this town? Hi, this is AJ Robinson, creator of Chronicles of Spring Shard and the voice of Terran March. I just wanted to thank you for listening to this episode. If you liked it and want to know when the next episode is up, feel free to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Spring Shard Chronicle for weekly updates and teasers. Next week, there will not be a new episode, so enjoy your Easter with your family. Episode 7 will be up on April 26th. If you liked this episode and would like to listen to it even when you don't have Wi-Fi, it is available for download on iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. If you want to listen while looking at a picture of the super cool cover art, you can also listen on YouTube. Check our social media for more information. The voice of Dottie was Olivia Hansen. Special thanks to Jess Milton, Derek Tiger, and to you listening right now. And hey, happy Easter.